Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are continuing our build of the Klingon Kronos 1, a 1 350th scale model kit being put out this year by Polar Lights. And of course, a big thank you to Polar Lights in round two for letting me work on these review copies. And if you'd like to pick the model kit up or the lighting kit, you can pre-order them at Colt TV Man Hobby Shop. There are links in the description below this video. Now, in our last video, we worked on lighting the nacelles, and we have a fantastic lighting effect down here on those lit nacelles. But today, we're going to move on to work on probably the most important part of this lighting kit. We're going to be working on the command structure, the bulb, this triangular pie piece, and the bridge up above. Now, to me, this is probably the most important video I'm going to do on this lighting kit because we know the nacelles look great. We know the lights back here by the bulkheads are going to look great. Uh, we know all of these lights are going to look good. I think the lights I had a much more difficult time last time were the lights on kind of our pie piece and the bulb. I was not really able to get those to look good unless you're looking at them straight on. So I'm going to be taking this on with a literal vengeance and doing everything I can to make my new version of this Klingon battlecruiser look better with the lighting than my previous one. Now, if you take a look at the kit parts with me, you'll see why it's so hard to get the light through because these pieces are tiny. So there is a dime and just kind of compare uh, the the lettering on that dime versus the size of those windows. These windows are tiny. And you can really see how quickly the light stops coming through if you turn it really at any angle. These are the windows for the bulbs. Once again, absolutely tiny fine windows. And you can see change the angle really at all. And that light stops coming through. So first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to drill out these windows so they are much, much bigger. And then we're going to trust the photo etch to give us the right shapes when we're done. So here is our before shot. All right, and here's the after. You can see we've drilled out some very big holes to let light through. And hopefully that will let light in from some bigger angles. The next part we're trying to prep are these parts, and they were originally opaque in the Katinga version of this release. They are clear in the new one, and thanks to some people on Facebook who provide me some reference pictures, there are supposed to be some lit windows along the back ridges of the command module for the Kronos one. And it's Kind of an interesting throwback because when they first released the model kit for the D7 back in the 70s, these were clear green parts, despite those parts not being green or lit up in the original show. So a little bit of a throwback to that inaccuracy of the first kit, but now it is accurate. So I've masked off some windows. We're going to spray paint this white and then black to light block it. And we'll begin closer to be putting in the lights. Throughout this kit, there's a lot of nice engineering. Um, you can see there's some nice clear parts here. Perfect place for an LED to shine some spotlights out towards the back of the Klingon ship. And look at these raised edges. Our next piece sits inside this raised edge to block any light. Very nice use of a clear part here. So this is for the bridge. Uh, this clear part will fit right in there. You can see it has a hole for an LED to illuminate it. And then the top of the bridge will sit down on top of it. I've gone ahead and I have sprayed the inside surfaces with a very glossy white, just to kind of give us the brightest diffused light we can throughout the model. All right, and hopefully you can see that there is a raised lip all the way around this surface. And that lip will actually fit behind these other pieces. So you'll have that kind of raised physical lip blocking any light from the inside. And that means you won't really have to do much seam work on the outside. And here you can see how big I've drilled out the holes around the equator of the bulb. 
All right, with our parts prepped, it's now time to install the LEDs. And there's actually two strands of LEDs that will light these command structures. The first one is strand F. And this lead will actually go to our circuit board to power it. And then it will have three LEDs. Two will go on these little standoffs to light the front of our bulb. The third will go in this tube to light the photon torpedo launcher. And then it actually has a socket to connect the next strand of light. So that strand is strand K. And so it has a plug to fit into that socket from the other one. And then it actually has five LEDs. The two smaller ones will fit in right here to light these rear lights. Then it will have two that fit in these standoffs to light the front of the command structure. And then its final one will go up into that red disc to light the actual lights for the bridge. On the top, things are definitely a little bit more crowded, but you can see we've got two LEDs pointed back at those clear parts and two LEDs pointed forwards. So these clear parts, I masked off some windows. And yes, there should be two rows of windows, but for the purposes of reviewing this lighting kit, one will do just fine. So I masked off some windows, painted it white on the inside, black on the outside. And now we're gonna start building up these structures. As we do that, let's do a little bit of a lighting test. So let's connect the top half to the bottom half. And now we can connect it to our circuit board. And take a look. All right, one, two, Three, four, five LEDs working there. All three working here. There's that red part glowing very well. Well, so far, good viewing angles. Very lit up. Of course, the hard part will be kind of fitting those together with all those wires in place. But you can see how it will work once we do it. Yep, pretty happy with those lights so far. And then on the top half, this LED goes right in here to that red disc for the bridge. See, that looks very nice. This is kind of the clear part that goes across the front. And of course, we've talked about how these parts will be lit up along the sides. Let me do a little more assembly off camera and we'll be back. All right, I've really been going nuts, opening up as many of these holes as I possibly can, trying to get as much light through as possible and I've put the clear part behind it in place. I've scuffed it up a lot to hopefully just catch a bit of that light. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on. We'll take a look at it once with lights before we put on the photo etch. After that, I'll put the photo etch on and we'll have kind of our completed project for the day. So I feel this is really what I have to do to be able to get good visibility on these lights once we have the photo etch on. And I'm really trusting the photo etch a lot to kind of clean up these windows. I've made a lot of windows that we would call kind of Flintstone windows, like look, look like a uh, caveman carved them, but they're laying the light through and we're gonna trust that photo etch. We'll clean them up into some nice, fine rectangles. All right, so the lighting kit comes with a photo etch sheet. And photo etch is photochemically etched brass. You can see it looks like this. And I wish I had done a little bit of this on camera, but I've already cut out uh, the strips that we use to frame the windows and I've applied it to the model. But photo etch is a great way to add detail to a model kit. I'll put up a picture of what the sheet looks like before you cut anything out on it. Now this picture is actually from the original release of the lighting kit about five years ago, maybe four years ago. Um, so you can see it has the window frames there and you just cut those out. Now this is my original photo etch sheet from the first time when I built the Katinga. This is uh, the original lighting kit. Uh, this one is in the newest lighting kit. This one is noticeably thinner. Uh, you can kind of see this one's a lot stiffer this one much more thin and flexible. It is noticeably thinner in your hand. And that's nice because that means it can conform to the model better. 
And of course, it also provides some detail that go across the hull. But the big part of the lighting kit photo etch is framing the windows. Here you can see a big strip of photo etch laid across the front of that bulb. You can really see how fine those rectangular windows are in the photo etch. Across the top, you can see I've laid in two strips of photo etch to clean up my windows, to change those big old bulky drill holes into nice rectangular windows. Now I do appreciate this as a technique. You know, this, if done right, should look better than a model like the OSS Voyager, which was done entirely in clear, and you scrape away the windows. When you scrape away the windows, you will not get rectangular shapes as clean as these ones. Now, this is a 1 350th scale model. This is an advanced model. So I'm not going to fault the model kit makers by giving you something like this, where you have to modify the model, where you have to drill out the holes, where you have to do kind of that modification to the plastic to make the lighting work well. I think that if you buy a model kit of this price, of this skill level, of this scale, that's one of the things you're signing up for. So as long as we have a good effect in the end, I think it's fair that you have to do some modification to the kit parts to make these windows work. And these windows really are just absolutely tiny. I think that Photo Etch is probably one of the better ways to do this. All right, now we really get down to it. Let's turn on our lighting kit. And so first, I definitely have to say, I still love these warp nacelles. I think that is the coolest effect and it's gonna make the model really stand out. Next thing I'd like to say is I really like uh, the bridge here. I love that red ring. And of course, we're gonna mask that off so only we have a few red windows sticking out. All right, looking at the rear view on the Katinga, and I'll put that rear view screenshot up again. See, we do have the lights along those stair steps. We have some of the spotlights shining back on the ship. All right, and taking a look at that photo etch again, you can see that we really do have nice square rectangular windows. And as opposed to my last build, we really do have a much wider field of view here to see those lit windows. I always have to kind of remind myself, we're not looking for spotlights. We're not looking for headlights. Uh, we're looking for just lit windows to give the impression that the ship is alive and lived in. Here we go, taking a look at the photo etch and the windows on the bottom of the bulb. I like it. I like the effect a lot. Uh, here's kind of those stair steps on the other side. And now let's try and do a few comparisons with my old Katinga and see if I was able to do a better job this time. All right, so here's the Klingon Katinga. And first, I have to say, I love that aggressive stance on the Klingon Battlecruisers. Just absolutely love it. I can't wait to have two of these facing down my refit Enterprise. Look at the Katinga. You can kind of see how few windows you see at one time. All right, so here is a comparison between my original Klingon Katinga model kit and my new Kronos One. So you can see a much better job opening up those windows. Okay, here if we take a look at some different viewing angles. Hopefully you can see that the Kronos One is doing much better. You know, I think this really shows you the difference. Spend some time, open up those windows, trust that the photo etch will get you back to some nice rectangular shapes. And you can clearly see me opening up those holes, drilling some big windows, just really gives me a much better effect. I'm so much happier with the way my Kronos One is looking compared to my old Katinga model. I'm really pretty happy with this result. And you know, with the darker colors on the Katinga, I would have expected the lights to show up better, but you can clearly see they look a lot better on the Kronos One than the Katinga. Now I do love having the Katinga nearby because it 
really does help me kind of set my goals and have a good vision of how awesome the Kronos One is going to be when it's completed as well. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this look at the lighting system for the Katinga and the Kronos One model kits. But more importantly, I hope that these videos provide you with a good and fair look at the model kit and the lighting kit, the potential and the limitations, the good and the bad, to really help you guys decide what you're going to do with your models and to help you with your buying decisions. Clearly, there's work that has to go into this to get it to be probably the lighting effect that you like. I think I'm pretty happy with this. I think that these windows are minute and fine and well-defined, and I like it. Expect the Kronos One lighting kit, photo etch, the model itself. Expect it to be a project. It's not going to be as simple as some of the One 1000s kits. It's, it's going to be a labor of love. And I'm definitely enjoying putting this one together. Of course, always a thank you to Round 2 and Polar Lights for letting me work on this review copy. Thank you to Cult TV Man for sponsoring the AllScaleTrek.com forums. And of course, thank you to you guys for following the channel and watching the build. I appreciate it very much. And I'll be back with a lot more videos on the Kronos One very soon.